And it's lunchtime, everybody. Guess what? I have a lot of YouTubes. Over 600 of them. And out of the 600 plus of YouTubes, there's over 2,700 images that are similar to the X-ray of the Mona Lisa. This X-ray is located here in the Medeon, and the Medeon is a diary, an old lost painting that I own that I have found done by Leonardo da Vinci. It cannot be disputed. There's no way in the world anybody would know that these images were even in there to try to copy them. They have to be done by the artist. There's no way anybody would spend seven years and use so much money back back then to the present of all his hidden codes. I've been for a while trying to figure out how come some of the numbers don't match that are next to the images. Well, it's so easy to figure that out, it's sick that I didn't figure it out earlier or anybody else. He's that good. And here, I'm gonna put a picture of my face up here so you guys can see me. And I'm really, really excited of another code. For example, if you turn around and you put a code number, which is gonna be into this image, but it's back behind here, that when we get into it, and you'll find out that the one and the two doesn't exist next to the photo, it's for his knowledge not to mix that same color so you end up with the exact same painting. So in other words, he'd be repainting over and over and over the Mona Lisa identically on the top surface. And that's not his intention. His intention is to hide his love from the ones uh, that could uh, have him uh, killed. He's not allowed to be gay, uh, or, or, and if he was lucky, he would be jailed for his love. Now, uh, and he has in history been uh, uh, set to believe that he has escaped some of that um, punishment uh, um, through um, the church and the influence of his father most likely and so on. There's a lot of political thing and we don't want to get into political and religion, do we? But let's get into this artist. So I'm going to Xerox out of here and you're going to hear my big old mouth talk, talk, talk about how it set me up for four hours to show you my love of this painting that is in the Mona Lisa, and the Mona Lisa is in my painting along with, if you take a look at this, this is an x-ray and you can see his hand. And out of his hand you can see, which is in this area, on her dress approximately here, right, right here, which is here, it is actually an owl. So, and it's a pyramid owl with some numbers and letters. So we're going to pull this down, and I'll show you the blown up version. That's the blown up version of the owl. Very difficult to do. I pat myself on the back uh, so hard that my arm broke. Can you believe that? Now, when you end up with the Mona to try to find it, you actually find it in the Mona. I'll show you. Right in the Mona. Lisa. In the Mona Lisa, it's actually right in here also. You can also see another owl here. He duplicates it. And it's it's right in right in this area. The one we're going for is here when it's turned 90. Because again, he copies it like a machine. And this was an accident I found. So here's the Mona turned sideways, and here is the owl. Now, there's going to be many different pictures of the owl because it transforms. So please try to pay attention. I can't get all the photos. I need uh, five movie theaters blown up for you to see the transformation of how the owl transfers. If you see how this owl has these V ears, okay, and then you have these big eyes and nose, 
but you see these other bodies and faces. But if you take this and you overlay this into the image of the Mona Lisa, it's the exact fit. If you see how this item comes on up of a face and it kicks over, this one does the same and it kicks on over. Now that's only one. I know they, they don't look like twins, but this is a different x-ray shot. Now watch this. See this curvature that goes like this and these? See the curvature that goes? Okay, so he, these, these layers is on the pitch of his, of his deal. If you see, there's an actual curve in here. He's starting another image underneath the x-ray. Or he's not starting, he's going over the top, vice versa. So he is very, very, very tricky. Now if you look, here is a face like of a Santa aiming this way with a crown. But if you take a look, you can see an eye and an eye on this side that there's a face aiming this way with a little mouth. You got the same image of a face here aiming this way and you see the same image of a face aiming this way with the nose in white. Very difficult to see. I hope you can see that. Now, I'm sorry I'm moving fast, but I want there's, there's so many of these to show you. So I'm gonna keep this one off this side and I'm gonna show you this is one of, the, one of the areas in which you, if you're doing good, you'll, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, let me see about this one. Okay, that is in the area that we're talking about is here, is the owl when it's turned 90. Okay, so now we got that part set. Now, in this, this is another image in which was turned and you can see the image floating in here that kicks out and then goes up kicks out goes up so when you take this image and you overlay it you have to bring it down because each image sometimes varies a little or a lot and it fits you see a big square area over here that has no, no real identity. But if you look at the circumference of a larger section of a V, you can see the V. So he has more hidden works either buried on top of this or vice versa. But this is the part I wanted to tell you about his numbers. His numbers are floating as a one and looks like a square head and a two. So we got this laying here, overlay, and the one should be here. Oh my goodness, look at that. And there is a two. So it's either this caused a bleed through that, that made it through uh, accidentally or that, um, just very very lucky but if you can see that's a larger two but there's a smaller two okay and then there's another two kicked and another two so Leonardo da Vinci's code numbers if you're looking for the one two three ABC to match a hundred percent it's gonna be very very highly unlikely to find it but looks like we got a little bit lucky today of giving you that general okay but let me go and show you something how this owl here is transformed a little bit into a person because it's like the Michael Jackson uh, 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 deal where uh, different nationality faces change now in here you can see that I told you in the corner how the icon changes. So it is very, very, very uh, uh, unusual, or not unusual, but in the sense of, of um, to, to get it to penetrate because it's really buried in the Mona. So I'm gonna open this up here and show you 
what's hidden in here. And as you can see, there's an owl face coming out of it. And he has this icon. Now, out of this area that's in this too, I have found the elephant. He has an elephant that is in black. Very strange um, icon mark, and it is in mine. But that is, this one is a very vague, vague one, but still, you can see the circumference of his build because it kicks out here, kicks over, and goes up. It goes here and then kicks over. So what he's doing is, and you can see, look, he's into owls. These are owls, believe it or not. Here's, if you just draw around this, is an owl. Then you draw around this, it's an owl hugging an owl. And then here's another owl hugging an owl, and another owl hugging an owl. So it goes big, smaller, 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 smaller. And then he makes the steps of owls. And if you take a look here, Here's an owl, and it comes on down and goes up. Here's an owl, okay? And that's the way he is. And if you really, really want, and you can, you can see this circle and this circle of the big eyes, and he gets the ears up here that's buried and hidden. And that's the way Leonardo da Vinci is. He gives you this cloudy illusion, but it's not an illusion because it's there. So we're gonna put this down for you to see. And I'm going to move this over to find out what I'm missing to show you. Oh, I see it. Okay, so now we have the owl there. Now here's another image of the Mona Lisa. And if you, if you can see, okay, he has a person here. And what's very, very unusual about it, there's, there's, there's an image in here that I'm going to have to overlay it's, I do believe it's right here. Here's the ears. You see some more. So when you overlay, you can see he's got an owl kicking here with an ear and an ear. He's got the image of a person with the, the pitch. Watch. Here, here is, when you reduce it down, this is an owl because it's a man that's built in the beginning and transforms into an owl. Right there. And I know that seems odd, but if you really look at it, like this guy has glasses. I don't know if the other one has glasses. It's right here. See, it's the pyramid. I know it seems odd, but it's his trick. And, it, and it's almost where I don't want to put it in YouTube because it's so hard to believe. But this last image, if you see that it's not even located in the same area of way down by her shoulder or way up to the top. Because what he is, is he's copying the same image and it transforms. That's my meaning. I'm not saying that this image is identical to this one, but in theory, or in, in, in realism, if you go through the layers, you're gonna find out it is. Look at this. We put this up here, and if you see, it looks like an S, an upside down A, and a little A, and another A. So if you lay this individual up in here, is there any lettering that represents it? And most likely it won't. Now this actually has a kind of an outline of an A here. And then this is kind of like a zigzag little um, P, a, a bean of some sort. And you got some kind of little indica indicator here. The coincidental of his works to be in copied. Now he even has an S floating here, but it's a dink. But this S is turned on an angle. And it looks like I S A A, I don't know, upside down V and an A or so. And if you look over here, here's a twisted S with with an H or so. And or something that resembles it. But this is, again, not my favorite, 
as an example, but it is something if you're able to understand where I'm leading to as a bad teacher, that's what I'm trying to say. Now I'm holding it and you can see the sprinkles that are on the layer. I'm going to let off on the clicker and you can see how they drop. That's only a portion. Now I'm going to hold it again and move it. That's only a portion of different layers of hidden. These are little dots that are millions of little images. Just what's laying on the sprinkles of the, of the Mona. So each time you turn this Mona, look at this Mona in any section there are micro images that build the Mona. It's a copy machine. Now I don't know what this one is. I don't remember. Oh, this is the image originally where it is located when you overlay my painting over the top to find the the uh, owl. Now, because of yesterday's YouTube you uh, of her laying uh, in between uh, my painting of the woman and the man and her hand uh, laying in the in the face um, the owl is in this area you can actually see an eye and an eye here you, you without even going through the transfer so if I flip this down Got one notch, I do believe. And I know that's a bad image. Let's see if it works better in reverse. And that's where she lays. That means there would be an N over here if we were lucky. We're not lucky that I can see. But there's a lot of images I'm sure you can see. Uh, better than I because they, they show up. Now look at, you see there's a face here with a crown. Here's a face here. Okay, so when you overlay where we're talking, you can see the face bleeding through. When I slide it on down, you can see the face bleeding here. So Leonardo da Vinci, again, is a trickster. Now you can see this little icon that runs through here that we were playing with okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this and go over to the hand and slide it readjust it just a little so we get a little more movement out of it and see if we get lucky which is going to be pretty difficult to get lucky with Leo okay it's very 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 Um, hard. Okay, so we have an icon here that's bleeding through, going long ways, like a round oval, another longer body, and a longer body, and it kicks out like this. It's a real long body that runs through here. So, if you take a look, He's got some kind of lining running through the same area. I don't know. Also, if you actually look, you can see the thicker color go up and come on down. Look at thicker color coming and go down. Leonardo da Vinci is an absolute hider, code man, drove me crazy, uh, genius, awesome, great lover great friend look at this right over here you can see the outline of a one right through here right on this making it big right through here there's the one okay that doesn't mean for sure but it looks like it because there's a mushroom head here and here's a mushroom head here and I got it buried with my letter here for the others, unfortunately, but that's me, you know. Um, wow. Well, let me see if I got one more, and then we'll call it quits. Well, we do have nothing. Now, remember that I've been trying to tell you about the Mona Lisa, and I've been trying to tell you about the Medeon. 
The Medion again is a diary, okay? A diary of Leonardo da Vinci's works. It is of his life, his, his, he's telling you his story book, okay? That is the Mona Lisa, okay? Mona Lisa that he was so in love with that he couldn't help himself but to repeat her in paintings until the day he died. Now, again, I've mentioned this before in my YouTubes. And out of the YouTubes, I've been mentioning, let's pretend that Leonardo da Vinci never had the Mona ever come by to see, to see him again, okay? Never. But he remembered her. Kind of like you remember so-and-so showing up and you're thinking, wow, I wonder about that. He would copy or he would stylist or he would paint her in his memory of what he did. And if you follow his YouTubes, not YouTubes, <laughs> follow my YouTubes, but uh, if you follow his works or his words on... Uh,